Hi and welcome back to Talking Treasures. This week we're going to take a look at a small collection of ceramics, all decorated by students of the various schools of art throughout Stoke-on-Trent. So come with me back down to the ceramic stores and we'll take a look. So welcome back to the ceramic stores here at the Pottery's Museum and Art Gallery. And today we're going to look at some really, really nice uh, items from, from a relatively small sub-collection of, of ceramics. Um, mainly around the topic of the schools of art here in, here in Stoke-on-Trent. Firstly, we're going to look at this, this piece here. So this is an apprentice piece. This was decorated by a young lady by the name of Clara Morris at the tender age of 13 back in 1909. So this was made by the Colden Pottery and this will have simply been a piece for, for Clara to, to basically practice on, to practice the skill of, of enameling an outline print. So as you can see, it's, it's not perfect. But again, this, this young girl is only 13, just out of school, and she's learning the ropes, and obviously she's hoping to become a full-time paintress on, on the factory. But that brings us nicely onto the idea of these schools of art and, and how they came about in Stoke-on-Trent. So in the kind of second quarter of the, of the 19th century, there was a real concern in, in Britain about the state of um, our kind of art and design across the creative industries, industries like the potteries, industries like metalworks and, and things like that. And the fact that we were falling behind our continental competition, the likes of the Germans and, and the French, in our um, art and design, basically. So there was, there was a movement, a very kind of London-centric movement towards this idea of educating the, um, the working classes, the, the people who worked within these creative industries. And giving these people a, a better education when it came to the history of art and design. A select committee was formed and um, the very first school of design opened in 1836 in Somerset House. In, in the following years these kind of schools of design popped up all over Britain, mostly in uh, manufacturing centres such as Birmingham and Stoke-on-Trent, the potteries. Um, the Stoke School of Art and, and the Hanley School of Art were the first to open in, in 1846. And what these places, what these institutions were, were meant to do were, were, was to take in um, these young individuals, male and female, who were I mean, leaving school or looking to go into the ceramics industry and, and give them a good solid foundation in the history of art and design and um, increase their appreciation and understanding of, of good form and kind of what made real kind of timeless classic art and design. And these institutions throughout the 19th century grew in popularity across the country and um, by the turn of the 20th century each of the six towns of Stoke-on-Trent could boast their own school of art. So the first piece we're going to take a look at is this really impressive large wall plaque. It's all freehand painted in these kind of raised enamels, this wonderful bird and, and branch design and on the back we have all the information we could ever want. So Charles D. Nixon is, is the name of the gentleman who, who decorated this item. Um, he was a pupil at the Tunstall School of Art and this piece was, was, was finished in 1915 and exhibited in the competitions that they had and, and this was an exhibition piece which would have shown Mr. Dixon's skills against his contemporaries um, across the different art schools of Stoke-on-Trent at that time. Moving on to this smaller but equally beautiful plate here, again, all freehand painted. Um, we have this wonderful piece, again, Colden's pottery piece. Ethel Sanders was a young lady who, who painted this in 1917. Interestingly, we, um, we have a number of items from Ethel Sanders in the collection. Um, this, this young lady, she attended both Stoke and Longton School of Arts and completed both a kind of basic uh, paintresses course but then went on to what was known as a kind of advanced paintresses course and we believe that she went on and actually had a career as an art and design teacher in the schools of art. So obviously a very very talented young lady, really exquisite painting on there and she will have done this at, at the age of about 16. And the second piece again decorated by, by Ethel Sanders, this one decorated slightly later in, in 1921 and what is interesting is that in 1920 the outgoing principal of the School of Arts 
was replaced by Gordon Forsyth, who, who came to Stoke to be the principal of, of all of the schools of arts, and a chap who had a huge influence on the school of arts and, and art and design across the ceramics industry in Stoke-on-Trent for the best part of 25 years. And Gordon Forsyth himself, um, a ceramic artist, is very well known for his use of luster and um, these kind of heraldic patterns. And you can clearly see here we have pupils taking on the similar kind of styles as, as their um, kind of principal mentor. So very interesting piece and says a lot about the, um, the state of the art schools uh, at that time. Onto something quite different, a small plate. This one decorated in 1923 by a young lady named Vera Taylor, worlds away from the luster design we saw by Ethel Sanders. But again, a good example of old freehand painting and, and enamelling, um, this kind of classical lady here with a dress, a uh, stylish and kind of floral design to the side. So again, this, the, this whole idea of, of having these schools of art was to, ha was to get these young um, females, males in, and um, basically give them a good grounding, a good education, and good teaching in um, things such as painting, modeling, uh, and things like that, so they, were, they could go into the workplace and really have a good understanding of, of what was fashionable, um, what would sell, and, and how to produce the best work for their manufacturer. Slightly different shape this time. This wonderful kind of long necked vase. Again, slightly different to what we've just seen previously in that it's um, underglaze decorated. It's a wonderful underglaze blue decoration here. Decorated by a young lady by the name of Annie Hulse. What's interesting is a little bit of genealogy research on Annie Hulse shows that in 1939 she is listed, her occupation is listed as a, a pottery works paintress. So this lady obviously attended art school and then became um, a paintress and, and had a very long and no doubt successful career as, um, as a paintress and I kind of I really like that, that design there. It's a wonderful piece. Another plate again and uh, again the use, this use of um, silver luster here, platinum luster and this very very stylized tree very, very typical of kind of mid-1920s design and something, I mean, encouraged by Gordon Forsyth, the, the principal of, the, of the, the schools of art at that time. This one is decorated by a Miss M. Macy of the Hanley School of Art. So that was a, an institution on Pall Mall. Most of those buildings on Pall Mall have now gone. The School of Art was there. The museum preceding the museum here was on Pall Mall. Another very nice example of very contemporary design by students um, of the School of Art. Now that is familiar to a lot of you and people will immediately shout up, oh that's surely a piece of Clarice Cliff and it's, it's not a piece of Clarice Cliff and this bit has a, a particularly interesting story. So this nice vase was painted by a young lady named Ellen Brown. Ellen Brown, she was a student at the Burzum School of Art and she decorated this piece in 1929. Now, a lot of Clouscliffe fans and, and kind of aficionados will tell you that Clouscliffe didn't start to design this kind of stuff until the year later, 1930. So it is thought that perhaps this young Alan Brown, who was around about the age of 14, 15 when she designed this, could very well have influenced Clouscliffe and everything that came out of Clarice's Newport works and, and, and all of the wonderful stuff that the Bizarre Girls produced over the 1930s. So again, a wonderful example of, of a, a young student of the School of Art designing something very, very contemporary and that ultimately went on to be very, very popular all across the world and is still obviously popular today. Now for something completely different, we have a, a modelled piece here. So as I was saying in the beginning, these School of Arts were just purely there to train people how to surface design. They provided courses in modelling. These wonderful rolled clay figures here are synonymous with Burslem School of Art and um, many, many different kinds of these were, were made by students there under the, the tutorship of William Rusco, a very well-known pottery modeller and, and like Gordon Forsyth, very, very influential during his time at, at the Burslem School of Art. And these are just wonderful little things and very humorous and I suppose the idea was that 
it was getting young students there just to interact with, with, with clay and, and to get it in their hands and to roll it and to mould it and just, just to learn the basics of how clay kind of reacted and how you could form it and what it was like when it was fired. So, yeah, a nice, lovely kind of novel way of, of, of learning and I suppose make, made education um, fun for the, for the students there. I'm bringing us into the kind of second half of the 20th century, our kind of most recent piece of um, School of Artwork. Uh, this kind of 1960s wonderful kind of sponge ground and then hand painted piece uh, was made in uh, probably about the 1960s, we're not 100% sure on date, but it, it, it's a piece made in the 60s. This was decorated by an individual named A. Al Bram. We don't know too much about this individual. Again, just, just like the, the luster pieces in the 20s, the Alan Brown piece in, in the late 20s, the 30s, this, again, very indicative of this kind of really contemporary work that students were doing there, trying to be at the forefront of, of ceramic kind of surface design. And um, again, very 1960s, I think, in, in, in its style. The actual piece of ceramic it is on um, is a wonderful midwinter style craft fashion shape. So again, contemporary shapes that these students were working on so that when they kind of graduated, when they went into the industry, um, they were used to the, the shapes that they were, they were going to have to work on it. It's kind of no use, I suppose, training on shapes that were popular 30, 40 years ago if you were then to go into the industry uh, and work for a manufacturer who's making these very modern um, kind of oblong shapes and then have to adapt your surface design to that. So again, Another point of, of, of the schools of art, I suppose, again, was just drilling these, these students in best practice and, and how to work in the industry when they left and, and how to make the best use of, of their education um, and the time spent there. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at um, this kind of small cross-section of items made by various students from the um, Stoke-on-Trent School of Arts. Again, it's only a small selection, um, but it's only a small part of our collection but again very very interesting lots of lots of individual stories behind each piece I, I really enjoy them and I hope you did too I hope you enjoy taking a closer look at some of our wonderful ceramics I'll catch you again next time on Talking Treasures